Hey! Merry Christmas! Hey! Good morning! <laughs> Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from... I'm just here, guys. Yeah, why does he have to be from somewhere? Yeah, I'm he's not from any Clearly, place. he's here. I'm here. Together, I hope you're here, too. Together, the three of us, and we're glad you're here. It's Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Merry Christmas oh. again, and hi, boy. Merry hi. Christmas to you. Man, this uh, tobacco yeah. advent has just flown by. I know, and I can't believe we've come to the end, but wait, we haven't. Just so you know, at this moment, and there may even be packages coming, we have one more person who has sent us tobacco samples. So we're going to go ahead and record a day 26. What? And everyone who has already sent us samples will be getting a cornament, either for the day that we use their tobacco, or if we didn't use any of their tobacco, during tobacco advent, we're going to send them a special cornament. Cool. So, again, just uh, our, our way of saying thank you so much for the support. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Today's tobacco comes to us from YouTuber Seabates55. Seabates55, he actually left comments on our videos. Yeah. He's uh, We've communicated a little bit through some other social media, I forget which. But um, we thank you, thank you very much for the sample. What he has sent to us is John Bull which is a uh, over-the-counter English blend and awesome. um, as we pack our pipes and light that up let's dig a question out of the pile so and just just for clarity's sake you know I, we mentioned it before um, if you have sent us tobacco and we haven't smoked it yet it's gonna be what we smoke throughout the beginning of 2018 with Mark Women's Breakfast Club whenever that comes back we're gonna take a, a minor hiatus um, with all the moving and holiday and everything. But we will be back with our weekly episodes. Jan January. Soon. January. January. And, uh, you know, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when when we do come back. All right. This is the last one? Uh, we're going to answer a question tomorrow, too. Okay. Wait, wait. I mean, it wouldn't I haven't be, used my veto it yet. It wouldn't be a bonus tobacco ad, then. Uh, if you could spend the day, a whole day, in one store, what would it be? Mm. Hmm. It's probably easy. I, I I think, but it's easy for for me for the opposite way of what you would think. All right. Go I, ahead. I need to ask a question to clarify the the yeah. question. Do we have unfettered? No. Oh, dang it. No, you have the your your current budget. Okay, but no, I'm saying. No. Can we be there on a day that it's closed and get to play? That's an interesting question. Okay, if we're allowed to do that, uh, you know, what, what was that movie? Mannequin or even Big? Right, where you're stuck if we in could go and, and play. Destroy it? I wouldn't destroy well, it. Well, let's, let's, let's start with no. Let's start <laughs> with no. We'll answer both. We'll answer no and then yes. Because my answer totally changes. Because for me, when I think of, when I think of spending a day in the store, I think... If, I, if, if I'm spending like a whole day there, say like 8 hours, 12 hours, whatever, um, I'm going to get bored pretty quickly. Yeah. And so for me, I think the answer is probably like uh, Barnes & Noble. Like that's that's a place where if I'm stuck there, I'm at least going to be reading something, yeah. able, to, able to do stuff. Like even Smoking Mountain Knife Works gets boring after a couple of hours. when you Once you've seen everything, if you can't play with it, if you, you can't, you know, don't have unlimited budget to buy stuff. Um, so my, my mind me, goes no. to, remember the museum store? We used to go to it in Columbus called the museum store. Yeah, with all the stuff in it. Where they had basically one of everything open for you to play with. Oh, yeah. That was a fun store, and, and it was smart because you you better believe that they fully vetted those items so that they could be, oh, hey, don't set yourself hot. on fire. Boy. Yeah, that was, I got that in the mouth and then on the arm. Super cool. <laughs> they had to have vetted those products to be able to withstand the kind of use that they would get. Mm -hmm. You know, how many batteries are they going to run through, and can people handle these? The company I work for um, sold a kitchen accessory that they put into one of the, I forget what it was called. It was a test store that, I think it was Home Depot had this test store that was a completely different concept. And you could go to this place and they had so much more than your standard home center. And we put a kitchen accessory in that had some easy adjustments. 
mm -hmm. right? So you could move doors, you could move shelves, things like this. There's all movable parts. It was something that was designed to be installed one time, adjusted by the cabinet maker, and left alone. But because it had these knobs and handles that made it easy to adjust, people messed with this thing all day long. Yeah. And the very few locations that they had, our local reps, were spending hours every week going and tweaking mm. this kitchen accessory. Um, I want to say it was a variation on a, on a Lazy Susan or something like that. Um, Home Depot Expo. That was the name of the store. Huh. And so thinking back to that, if we could have made the decision what's going to go into the store and what shouldn't, we wouldn't have selected something like yeah. that. You know, we have that at trade shows where we'll put something that, that maybe needs a little bit of instruction and people will be messing around and doing yeah. things. We had a kitchen pantry one time at a trade show that pulls out and a pantry that pulls out and the door comes with it you have access from the left to the right. Alton Brown used one of our pantries on Good Eats. Hmm. Well, they came up with this clever idea that, it, that they had a unit that you'd pull it out and then you could rotate it 90 degrees. So if you're in maybe a tight spot or something like right. that, you have full access from the front. It had to be pulled all the way out to a little stop. Then you could rotate it. Well, we had and you these, had to rotate we had, it back before you try to close it. Correct. We had these <laughs> cabinet makers who were like playing break the hardware hmm. at the show. It, and I suspect that they were even saying to themselves, yeah, but what happens if somebody does this? And by the end of the first day, we screwed the door shut because they broke it. Wow. So I think about that and having something in a store like they had yeah. at the museum store. Um, I would enjoy, if that were to happen, that's the kind of store I would want to go to. Yeah. Now, let's say it's the store's closed. Yeah. And they don't know that I'm there, and I'm just going to play. I'm going to plug everything in. Then a woodworking store yeah. like like Woodcraft or Rockler or Woodworks in Columbus or you know any one of these places. So there's a great woodworking store, more than just woodworking, but a great store in Sioux Falls. That oh, would I love to just go and play for a day that they're closed or an old hardware store. You know that has a basement and an attic that no one's allowed to go into. Yeah. Um, Milan Hardware in Roanoke, Virginia. I'll go there. I would play in the basement. That's cool. But like I did at um, there in. Um, dang it! What's the name of that place in Milwaukee? It's slipping my brain. But where uh, I did a video on my channel where I went into the basement of that tobacconist that has been there forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fun. Hmm. I'll, I'll link to that video. Why am I going oh. blank on the name of that place? Golly. Well, you know it already. Yeah, in that circumstance, I think, I think for me, probably, um, this is an easy answer, but probably like a Best Buy. A place with some electronics, some, some video games. Best Buy usually has uh, one or two comfy seats near the, the, the video games and just spend all night gaming. <laughs> okay, so Playing. you can pick any person living or dead to hang out with you at that yeah. store that you're going to be able to do anything in. Yeah. I would I would hang out with Norm Aber, formerly of the New Yankee Workshop, this dead? old house. No, he's living. Okay, that's probably good. Um, cause you didn't, you, you didn't, you didn't specify that the dead person is not dead. <laughs> so, I would, I would like to, to video game with the corpse of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> oh, Abe, yeah. it looks like you're out of lives. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, 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 he and I would, uh, <laughs> would emancipate some hostages. <laughs> Um, so, uh, <laughs> this is Christmas. It's Christ our Christmas it's Christmas Day. Son. We have me and Zombie Abe gaming all night. <laughs> Best Buy style. You see, did you see Abraham Lincoln versus the zombies? No, I did not. Was well, it any good? <laughs> it's so bad, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's so yeah. bad. They are at Fort Pulaski, which is where uh, I, I hung out one time. And so that was kind of wild to see, uh, mm. again... Going into corners, Fort Pulaski is um, 
Oh, is it Fort Pulaski? Oh, gosh, my brain. Wow. Yeah, Fort Pulaski. All right. Do you, do you guys think Abraham Lincoln is a PlayStation guy or an Xbox guy? Zombie Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> you talk. <laughs> um, so, you know, we... Today is Christmas Day. Um... And, you know, they, they say it's the thought that counts, which is good, because uh, that's all I have for you. But, <laughs> but I, thought, I thought, well, I'm really good at Google. Surely I could find uh, some metal um, Sharpies. Or surely I could find oh. some replacement nibs. I got bad news. Oh. Yeah, I, I could, but they're 80 bucks. Oh, my God. They're 80 bucks, and... Yeah, they're, uh, they're not sharpie. not gonna happen. They, you know what they have done though? They they now have the the metal version is just the sharpie pen, so they don't have the sharpie sharpie in metal, but they still have the sharpie pen, which narrows down to a fine. For Pulaski, cool. Dang, wow, that Great. was it's random. Well, why why Fort Pulaski comes to my mind anyway? Fort Pulaski was a fort where I would say forts ended. America stopped building fortresses because of what happened at Fort Pulaski. And it was a fort that had been a, um, a, a U.S. Army fort. Then the Civil War began and the Confederates took it over. Okay. Well, the Union decided that's not acceptable and at some point during the war they decided to go in and take the fort. And so what they did was they set up on like a sandbar about a mile away. And they sent a messenger, knock, knock, knock. Hey, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, surrendering, that would be great. And they laughed and said, not, not going to happen. And then they started firing. They left them the gift of a wooden horse. <laughs> kind of. They introduced the rifled barreled cannon. And before oh. that time... Cannon barrels were just these smooth or semi-smooth barrels, right. but this one is rifled, so it would basically throw a spiral. Right. And burrow in. In uh, in a day, not only had they destroyed completely destroyed the front side of this fort, but they were now dropping bombs beyond the fort into the magazine, which is where you Oops. store all your gun munitions, <laughs> your gunpowder. And so they certainly did surrender at that point. Yeah. And um, go to the Wikipedia page on Fort Pulaski. It's fascinating. They have before and after photos of the fort. But that's where fortresses ended. And that is where Abraham Lincoln versus the zombies, zombies was filmed, in part. That's interesting. Yeah. So I, I, I know almost nothing about it, only what my wait, uh, waiter told me. But we were in St. Augustine, Florida uh, recently. And uh, uh, there's a fort there that was built by Ponce de Leon. Um, which, as everyone knows, is the paunch of the lion, uh, or the belly part, and that's where you tickle. Uh, that's where a lion is most ticklish. Um, they're not ticklish on the, the lying. armpits. You're or lion. The, the paws. Uh, they're they're most ticklish on the the paunch. The paunch de, de leon. Um, and uh, so, a Spanish uh, uh, Columbus um, <laughs> who showed up was, was looking for the fountain of life. There's fountain a fountain of, of the fountain of life there that you can you can find and drink fountain from. Apparently, it's disgusting. We didn't do that. It's a cool town though, really cool town. Uh, they have night of lights where the whole town is decorated with Christmas lights. Um, and uh, but they have there's a fort there. And what I was told is that the fort is made out of some rocks that are instead of being limestone and or granite um, like a lot of the other forts along the coast were, this was made out of some rocks that are formed from the, the crushing of the waves on uh, mussels. And so it, it, it breaks them down it. and forms them into this rock yeah. that is much lighter, and it's also a bit more, not pliable, but it's a little bit more elastic. And so it, it is a almost fully intact fort um, that even though it had been fired upon, the cannonballs would actually embed into the walls of it because of the the elasticity um, of this of this so the cannonballs this, become part of the yeah the part the of the fortress. structure wow. instead of instead of causing cracks and instead of knocking walls over it just sucks it in and it just stays there <laughs> unfortunately we because we were working we didn't have a chance to to swing by and see it for ourselves but uh, 
and I talked to someone who was just telling us all about it. Sounds really cool. It's fascinating. Yeah. How did we get on this? I don't know. Zombies. Uh, Abe Christmas, Lincoln. Christmas. Christmas Abe Lincoln. miracle. <laughs> so, how would you answer the question? What store would you? What get to was spend? the question? You get to get to spend a, a time in a store by yourself, yeah. playing for a day. And uh, wasn't with, even by yourself it's with a zombie, this, living or dead, playing in a store for. A day. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Thank you guys so much for spending Tobacco Advent with us. Uh, again, tomorrow we're going to be posting a video, a bonus video, and for all of you who have sent tobacco, thank you. For all of you who have sent tobacco that we haven't gotten to, uh, thank you. Also, we will get to that in the new year and so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when those videos come back don't cost nothing but merry christmas we will see you tomorrow merry christmas